Jean-Yves Duclos is Canada's Minister of Families, Children and Social Development and uh, he was taking questions today responsible for uh, a lot of the government's call centre programs and some of the weaknesses that we will raise with him identified by the Auditor General today. Uh, he joins me now. Thanks for being with us. Hello, Peter. Good nice to have to you be here with again. You. Thanks. Half of all Canadians, the uh, AG found, eight million of them who try to call government call centres to speak to a real person can't get through. Uh, what's your reaction to those findings today from the Audit Auditor General? Well, there are three different things. First of all, these call centers are extremely important. Many vulnerable Canadians depend on them to get the services and the benefits that they need to lead, to lead a good life and to find employment and to get the benefits that they deserve. Right, or to get the questions that answered that make them anxious, right? If they don't have answers, they're looking for answers, and this says they can't get them. That's true, because, no, you would expect that many Canadians nowadays would use Internet, and, and that's true. Yeah. Increasing numbers of Canadians use Internet services, but not all Canadians can do that. And often to talk to someone is better because you can handle a, a conversation more mm -hmm. rapidly. So this is a very important issue. Now, the good news is that, you know, since 2015, we've invested significantly in call center agents. We've increased the number of agents by quite a lot, and that has decreased the number of calls that needed to be hanged up. So, for instance, the number of calls that couldn't be listened to by an agent has fallen by 70%, and we've increased the number of calls that could be answered by 22%. But the third thing is that... The okay, just so I'm clear, so the, the 8 million number he identified today, that's, that's, it, it, it was 70% higher than that? In, in 2014, 2015, the last year of the previous government, 13 million calls hung up because people couldn't talk to an agent. Last year, for the full year, 4 million of such calls needed to be hung up. So it's 9 million fewer calls that had to be interrupted. So that's a big 70% fall in the number of people that couldn't speak to an agent. But, there are but still, still too high, you would say. But still yeah. too high because it's very frustrating for people that, that phone and need services known to be hung up and they have to phone again the, the next hour and the next day while anxiously waiting for the services and benefits that they need. Now, the Auditor General also said that we need to do more because there are still people that can't speak to an agent. The good news again is that we are introducing modern technology finally at the call centers, a technology that will make sure that no one will need to hang up now uh, after this technology is introduced. Right. People will, have, will be able to wait and will be able to be transferred to another call center, which is not possible now. Now people phone Windsor right. and they can't if be transferred. If it's too busy, they can get moved to Hamilton or something. That's or, right, yeah. which is normal, you would expect, but which hasn't been done yet uh, in, in okay, these call so centers. Okay, so you talk about improvement. So he specifically mentioned that of the 221 call centers, eight have been modernized, and he saw no plan to do the others. Is that well, fair? The, that they, the priority was to invest in these eight call centers because they handle the vast majority of calls in Canada for, to the federal government. Right. And that's working well. Now, for these eight call centers, which again handle the vast majority of calls, that's working nicely. It's, it's faster, it's easier. People can, can ask for agents to call back. You know, if you don't want to right. wait, you leave a message and say, well, please yeah, call me Yeah, that's now back. a common practice with many companies, right? Uh, if you yes. don't want to wait on hold, uh, you'll be, you're, we'll call you back in the same sequence that you're waiting so you don't lose anything that's what you would expect but not every call center can do that you're saying that's what's that's, being that is on. now being what's introduced? the plan when will they all be able to do that well uh, that's a good question we, we, we've we've been successful with these eight call centers and in the next year or so we expect many more to be connected because it saves time for people but it also saves money for the government because if, you, know, you can connect from one call center to another so you don't have to have uh, every agent available at a particular call center if there is an overflow of, call, of calls at the particular center you can transfer these calls to another center mm -hmm. and therefore more efficient for everyone okay um, your department did object to the AG's suggestion that you track all callers who hang up uh, when they get frustrated your department only wants to count the ones who hang up after 10 minutes how come it's because we need uh, information on the reason for which Canadians hang up on a particular call. Sometimes they are transferred to a, a voice uh, information technology. They don't need to, to, to talk to someone in person. So there are a number of calls which would appear to be ended or actual calls that have been forwarded to a voicemail technology that enables Canadians to get the information that they need. But, and but he says deserve. the industry standard is to track all people who hang up. That's what you should be doing to figure that out. But you're saying you don't, need, you don't want to do that or need to do that. If they're so, not there for 10 minutes before they hang up, you won't track them. 
So one, one industry standard that we're certainly going to uh, obey is the fact that when calls exceed a particular number of minutes, we will include them in the calculation. So that's will minutes. have You're saying 10 minutes. That's exactly that. So once they, they go beyond 10 minutes, we know that they have exceeded the norm, which we call the norm, because every call should be answered less, by less than 10 minutes. So if people have to wait more than 10 minutes, we consider that these people have been uh, responded inappropriately and therefore they will enter the, the calculations. Okay, uh, let, me, um, let me switch gears here. I want to talk to you about an announcement you had yesterday which was an increase in the Canada Child Benefit, two years in a row. Uh, why does the Canada Child Benefit need to be increased, or indexed and increased? This is a, an absolutely essential benefit for middle class families. We were proud to make that a central piece of our middle class agenda. We knew in 2015 that if we were to invest in middle class families and families with lower incomes, that will help grow the economy. The good news is that in 2019, we have confirmation of this. The Bank of Canada, the World Bank, the OECD have all indicated that our investments in middle class families through the CCB, the Canada Child Benefit, have, led, have, have supported the great growth in jobs, in, in incomes, falls in poverty. You know, the fact that uh, the, the Canada is among the countries, the developed countries that have the highest growth rate. So it's all great for middle class families, it's all great for the economy. But for that benefit to keep pace with the cost of raising children, it has to be indexed every year. Right, so but as I look at the number, like it's, it's more than double the rate of inflation. I mean, the, the payments will go for people who qualify for them. I think it's uh, from 12 to $30 extra a month. Uh, depending on the age of your child and, and, and family incomes, that would be the, the maximum increase. But the, the increases, are they not? Twice the rate of inflation? Well, the increases are significant because the cost of living is also significantly increased. Just to give you an example, if a family of two children with $55,000 per year uh, will get an extra $30 non-taxable per month, in addition to the $700 per month, non-taxable that the family already receives. Mm -hmm. But the $30 is absolutely necessary because the cost of paying for food, for rent, for clothing, that cost increases every year. The previous practice of the previous government was not to index the family benefits, but that meant that year after year, families had a lower ability to look after the needs of their children. Okay, and what, what about the critics who say, look, it's an election year and you're boosting the payments, you're buying people's votes with, your, with their own money. What do you say to that? That's part of our plan that we announced in 2015. We said that we would be introducing the Canada Child Benefit, which is helping nine families out of ten, an average payment of $550 non-taxable per month. We also said we would be increasing that benefit with the cost of living. We've done this last year, mm -hmm. we're doing it again next year, and we'll continue to do that in the future. All right, Johnny Duclos, uh, thank you so much for your time. Good to see you again. Thank you, Peter.